Advanced orders are one of the simplest forms of automation and happen to be a way to place multiple orders all at the exact same time. Today, we're going to go through each of these advanced order types so you know exactly how they work and why you may want to use them. In order to begin, we're going to first need to pull up a stock by heading up here to the search box at the very top of our screen and going ahead and typing in a symbol, in this case NVIDIA. Within that stock profile page below that opens up, we can then come up here to the upper right hand corner and click on the sell button or the buy button to actually build out an order ticket to buy or sell the stock. You'll notice that as soon as I clicked on that buy button, it actually built out an order ticket down here at the very bottom of the screen. And right below that order ticket, that is also where we can see a line with all of the advanced order types right here. There also happens to be a few more advanced order types hidden within this advanced orders menu, which right here you can click on it and see the other ones listed out right here. But since I want to go through each of these one step at a time, let's go ahead and begin and start on the left hand side and work our way right. So I'm going to start by coming over here to the contingent order, the very first one on the list here, and go ahead and click on it. You can then see that as soon as I did that, a second order ticket was built just below the first trade. And by default, this one is actually a sell ticket, and it's actually going to be used to close out the opening trade. So the first trade is to buy 100 shares in NVIDIA. The second trade is to sell 100 shares in NVIDIA. You may have also noticed that in the center between those two orders is a little button which describes exactly how those two orders are linked to one another. Right now, by default, it's currently marked as then, meaning that if the first order ever fills, then the next order will get submitted. If we were to instead flip that over to or, it is now saying that we want both of these orders to be submitted simultaneously, but we only want one of them to fill. In this case, we either want the top order to fill or the bottom order to fill, not both. Whichever one fills first, the other one is going to be automatically canceled. Now the last button here, the and button, clicking that now means that we want both of these orders to be submitted and to work independently of one another. So if all of that wasn't quite clear, the contingent order button simply allows you to add additional trades and then manually choose how you want those orders to be linked to one another, so essentially how they should activate or how they should cancel themselves. Hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense after we cover the other advanced order types, but for right now, let's just go ahead and delete that contingent order by coming over here to the right and simply clicking that X button. Coming back down below, the very next advanced order type in the list, and one that I doubt many of you will use, if at all, is the Blast All Order. Clicking that, you'll notice that immediately another order is added to the opening trade to buy another 100 shares of stock. We can also see that the linking button defaults to an AND button, meaning just like the last example we went over, we want both of these orders to be submitted and work independently of one another. So essentially, it's just a way to place a bunch of different trades at the exact same time and have none of them linked to one another. Again, I doubt you'll ever use this one, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one here, and if we go ahead and delete this out, this one I could actually see you using quite often, and that one being an OCO order. Now the OCO, or one cancels the other order, you would typically use this on a position you already hold in the account. So for example, let's come up here to my current position section, and right here you can see I currently have 100 shares of Amazon in this account right now. So using that position as the example, if we were to go ahead and click on it, we can then see that the Amazon stock profile page automatically pulls up, and like I said before, since I already hold a position on this stock, I'm going to go ahead and begin by coming down below to my Amazon trade section, and then simply clicking on the button in the lower right marked close selected. That will immediately build out a closing order ticket, which in this case is in order to sell 100 shares of Amazon. But in order for us to add the OCO to this trade, we are simply going to come down here below and click on that OCO button. This time you can see an order on the top which defaults to a limit order, as well as a stop order here on the bottom. You can also see that they're linked with an OR button right here in the center, meaning we either want the limit order to fill or the stop order to fill, not both. This would then allow us to set both the profit target and the stop loss ahead of time and then have them work automatically for us so we don't have to sit here and watch the order the entire day. So going through a more practical example, with the limit order up here on the top, I could come here and adjust the price to 100. And now with that, I'm saying I only want to sell my Amazon position if Amazon ever goes back up to $100 a share. But I also want to come down here to the stop and say that if Amazon were to drop, 
I want to get out of the position if it ever drops below, let's say, $75 a share. Now saying that if it ever drops to 75 or lower, get me out of this thing immediately because I don't want to lose any more money. I could also come over here to the right of each of those order tickets and flip it over from a day order to a GTC order, meaning that I want these orders to go out every single day until one of them fills. So again, what I'm essentially saying right now is I either want to sell my Amazon position for a profit to sell those shares at $100 a share, or I want to get stopped out if it drops below 75. And then whichever those orders fills first, I want to cancel the other one automatically. Now the next order type in the list here that we're going to discuss, if we come down here below, that's going to be the first trigger sequence order. This type of order is going to create a chain of events. You're essentially saying that you want the first order to fill, then the next, then the next, and so on. So again, going through a more practical application of this, if we were to delete all of this out of here, let's go ahead and start over by coming up here to the top and creating a buy ticket on Amazon. I'm now going to come down here below and activate the first trigger sequence. What we're now going to do is start at the top and work our way down. So beginning up here at the top, I'm saying I want to buy 100 shares of Amazon. And let's say I only want to buy it if it drops down to, let's say, 80. What I want to do next is say that if that ever happens, then I want this order to be submitted. In this case, I'm saying if it goes back up to 85, I want to sell it for a, let's say, $5 profit. So go ahead and sell it at $85 a share. Once that happens, let's then say I want to put out another order to buy the stock once again. So right here it says then, I want this order to go out next. For this next one, what I want to do is actually buy, let's say, 150 shares this time. And this time I want to try and buy it for, let's say, 81. And again, because this is a first trigger sequence order, the first order has to fill. Once it fills, the second order is submitted. Once the second order is submitted, the third order will go out there. I could then continue adding to this by coming back down to the lower left-hand corner and hitting contingent order once again. And now you can see another order has been added. And then I could come up here and adjust this to 150 shares because I want to close out of this position that I just bought. And I could again say if it goes back up to, let's say, 86 this time, I want to sell it. But again, all this allows you to do is chain a bunch of orders together. So the first order fills, then the second, then the third, the fourth, and so on. But now that we've covered the first trigger sequence order, let's go ahead and delete this out of here. And now we can discuss the last two in the list. Let's go ahead and begin by coming back up here to the buy button to go ahead and build out another order ticket down here below. Now in order to see those final two advanced order types, we'll come down here below to the advanced orders menu. Within that menu, we can see a few of the ones we've already talked about, but then the last two here, the first triggers all and the first triggers OCO, those are going to be the final two. Beginning first with that first triggers all order, if I go ahead and click on that, taking a look here at what gets built out, we can see the opening trade up here at the top to actually buy the stock of Amazon. You can then see the linking button in the center here, mark then, means that once this order fills, it's then going to trigger these two orders to be submitted, these two sell tickets. If we were to look at the button in the center of those two sell tickets, how they're linked together, it's got an and next to it. That means that both of these orders could fill. They're not linked together. So I'm essentially saying I want to buy 100 shares of Amazon, and then if that happens, I want to sell it for this, or I want to sell it for this, and I actually want both of those orders to work independently, so theoretically they could both fill. Honestly, I really doubt you're ever going to use this one, but going through a more practical example, because right now this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, let's go ahead and begin by filling out the opening trade, and let's say I wanted to buy 100 shares of Amazon if it ever dropped down to 80, and then if that ever happens, I want to sell it for 90. So I'm going to come down here below and adjust this up to 90. But on the other hand, if Amazon continues to go down, I actually want to try and buy an additional 50 shares at, let's say, 75. So I'm going to come down here and flip this over to a buy ticket. I'm going to make this 50 shares. And I'm also going to come over here and adjust this to, let's say, 75. So again, the opening trade has to fill first. I have to buy the stock. And then if that happens, I'm trying to buy an additional 50 shares at 75. And I'm also trying to sell those original 100 shares at 90. But like I said a minute ago, I doubt you'll use this advanced order type too often, but it's nice to know it's here. Now the very last one that we'll be talking about, and another one I think you'll use quite often, is the first triggers OCO order. It's going to be nearly identical to the OCO we talked about earlier, so it's going to be used to set both a profit target and a stop loss simultaneously. 
However, we're going to use the first sugars OCO when we're attaching it to a brand new trade, when we haven't even bought the sock yet. So if we were to continue with the Amazon example, let me go ahead and delete these two orders off here on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and now attach an OCO order to this opening trade right here by coming down here to the advanced orders menu, then clicking on first triggers OCO right here. Within those three order tickets above, we can now adjust our opening price to actually buy the stock. Then if that fills, we actually buy the stock, we now can set our exits. So in my case, I'm gonna come up here and say that I first off wanna buy these shares at 80. I then want these two sell tickets to be submitted. One to sell it for a profit target of 100. The other to get me out if it drops down to, let's say 75. So again, just as a recap, what I'm saying is I first wanna buy 100 shares of Amazon at 80. Then if Amazon goes back up to 100, I wanna sell it for 100, cause that would be a $2,000 profit but also if it goes down to 75, I want to cut my losses because I didn't want to lose more than $500 on this trade. Whichever of those two sell tickets fills first, the other one is going to be automatically canceled. If I were to actually come down here below and place this, so come down here and hit the review button, then come down a little bit further and hit send, we'll now be able to see those orders reflected directly on the chart. So you can see here I scroll down a little bit. And now I can see the opening trade to buy the stock along with those two sell tickets directly here on the Amazon chart. I could have also seen that in the trade section if I scroll back up towards the top here. And finally, I could see it by coming over here to the position section and then coming over here to the activity page. And there is the opening trade to buy this Amazon position along with that OCO bracket right behind it. We could also cancel or edit it right here by simply hitting the little check mark box on the left hand side, then hitting cancel selected in the lower right hand corner. I know all the examples I used today were on individual stocks, but you could use this on anything. It could be done on options, on spreads, on futures, on Forex. You could use these advanced order types on anything. And I know that was a lot, but hopefully you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with advanced orders and how to use them within the TOS website. If you're already familiar with the Thinkorsim desktop platform, you should have no issues placing these same types of trades within the TOS web app. But if you were looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you on the next one.